about walking into a hat shop, buying a hat, what exactly do you do? Alright, this is, uh, I get asked this a lot, you know, all the time. Basically, the question is, I'm a beginner at hats, I'm just getting into hats, can you give me some tips and advice? Okay, I think what that kind of means is like, alright, I know I want to get a hat, but I don't know where to start. If I walk into a hat shop with a zillion hats, and a guy asks me, what do I want, I have no idea what to say. Alright, that's cool. That is pretty much, you know, most people who walk in, um, you know, they tell me something like, um, I want something to suit my face or something that looks good on me. You know, can you find me something that will look, look good on this guy? You know, stuff like that. It's basically, you know, it's up to me to try to find a look for you. So, as the hat salesman, I like to educate guys and, you know, kind of let you know about the different choices and um, how to go about narrowing down your choice from a zillion hats down to, you know, like maybe a couple of different things and then you try those two and then you pick the winner and that's it. Bam. So let's talk about that. All right. When you, you first walk into a hat shop, um, the first thing you're going to think about is going to be, is it going to be hat or cap? You want to do a hat? Like this kind of thing? Or are you thinking more of a, you know, like a flat cap, a newsboy cap, a British cap, driving cap? Not a baseball cap, more like what they call a dress cap. Uh, we have thousands of them, just tens of thousands. So many types um, at jjhatcenter.com. We're selling them since 1911 in uh, Midtown Manhattan. We're still here in the same neighborhood. Um, yeah, over 100 years. With 100, a lot of years, 107, 108 years. Um, so it's safe to say that people are wearing these things. Um, we've been going consistently since then, and hats and caps are still in style. Those are the two choices you had back then, too. Um, the cap is going to be portable. The, the caps you could stick in your pocket. You know, these are your pros and cons. You go to a restaurant, let's say, a lot of people don't want to bring the hat because they figure when they get to the table, it's a little embarrassing. What do I do with it? Uh, am I going to have hat hair? Are my date's going to see this hat hair? And, oh boy. And then also, am I going to stick it on the seat? Is there going to be a seat for me? Uh, I don't want to check it. Somebody's going to steal it if I do that or, or mess it up. Well, I'll just leave it at home. That's what people think. They just don't bring them. So caps are kind of like portable, you know, uh, when you get someplace, uh, onto the train, to work, a uh, restaurant, anywhere, you just fold it up and you stick it in your back pocket or you put it in your breast pocket or your, your bag or whatever and that's the end of it. Now a hat, they, you do have crushable hats. Crushable hats are really easy. And I think I have something crushable behind me. I could kind of demonstrate. People ask me all the time, what is a crushable hat? Now, um... A crushable hat basically means a hat that you could roll up into like a little cone shape and put it in your pocket, put it in your bag, um, like this. Frames go down, okay, they go up and down, you flip them down, you undo the crown, you open it up, you fold it in half, flatten it, that's like just flatten it. You fold it in half and you flatten it, so you get this U shape. Once you have the U shape, you roll, but you roll it um, loosely and very roundly. Let the hat guide you. So the idea is when you look at it, there are no pinches, no creases, nothing that's going to leave any pinch marks. Everything is round. All these marks, these are all round, these lines, folds. So you can take this, stick it right in your pocket, whatever, it's fine. When you undo it, you just pop it up, the brim goes up, and these have a memory that just come right back. The wind cord goes okay. Now, a foldable hat does answer this question. Most people don't have rollable foldable hats, so for this video's sake, I'm going to assume that your hat hats are not foldable um, because, you know, let's face it, most people have non-crushable hats. You know, if you do have a crushable hat, I'm going to say... 
nine out of ten people are not rolling them into cones and putting them in their pockets and stuff anyway. They just have their crushable hat and they say, oh cool, it's crushable, but they don't really take advantage of it. Maybe they, you know, they might do something like this, put it in their bag, but okay. Here's the deal. Um, there are pros and cons to both sides. Hats are going to be dressier. They're going to give you a little bit more of a polished, sophisticated look if you're going for that. They're also going to give you a more dramatic look, um, more kind of a grown-up look. You know, even if you're doing funky or rock and roll or brem up or the hustler or the player look, um, a cap is always going to look a little bit more casual and a little bit more, I don't know, less grown up or something. It's a little bit more for a jacket, not for a coat. Kind of like, you know, you look at all the movies and comic books, always the the kids and boys had caps and short pants and always the men had long pants and hats. So it's kind of like a man thing you put on a hat, you know, and it's, I'm not trying to be sexist or anything, but I'm just talking about the old days, you know. When the, um, yeah, the man characters would always have a brim. The kid characters would have a cap. So caps, in a way, are kind of like, you know, a little bit playful, a little bit casual. Um, but they can be darn fashionable if you do it right. You know, like a nice skinny um, ivy cap and black cashmere with, like, you know, a nice black outfit or something. It can look really cool. Or cool, like, newsboy and maybe, like, a gray hop sack or a nice tweed or something. You could look super dressy in a cap, but these, I think, are always going to look a little dressier. Okay, so these are dressier. Ding, side for the caps. More portable. Ding, side for the, um, sorry, side for the hat. Hats are going to be more dressy. Side for the caps are going to be a ding for being more portable. Okay, now hats are also, they're sort of more protection. Like when you're going out in the rain, in a blizzard, in a storm, um, they have a brim, so they, you know, they protect you. A cap, you know, they're pretty good, but it, I'll, I'll wear a cap with like a hood or something with the cap sticking out or something. It's not exactly enough for me, a cap, to wear in like a blizzard or a storm, but I guess kind of is. I would usually wear, like, if I have something on in the rain, it usually have some kind of a brim, like an outbacky, wide brim kind of thing. They do protect you more from the elements, uh, so that's a ding on the hat side. Um, they'll protect you more from the sun, you know, there's more shade here, and there's more rain protection. Um, what, are, what are some other dings I can give? Um, all right. There is a leather sweatband on a hat, which means it's going to block a lot of perspiration. There usually is not a leather sweatband on a cap, so you could sweat them up pretty fast, you know. And they're hard to clean, you got to clean them by hand, you know, hand wash them and stuff. A lot of people don't bother and they just throw them out after, you know, a certain amount of seasons when they get sweaty. These, you know, the leather is going to block a lot, lot more. It's kind of easier to deal with it, I think. Um, but I don't know. There's pros and cons to both of these sides. Now, whether you're a hat guy or a cap guy, it's kind of hard to tell. It's a very subjective thing. Uh, most likely, you're a both guy. You just have to find the right hats and the right caps. You know, there's just hundreds of styles. Um, and most people don't have the selection. You know? Now. I think it's good to try, you know, if you're not really sure, most likely when you're walking into a store, you know what you want. You, you have your heart set on a hat, you know, or a cap, you know. But when you go in, okay, let's assume we're doing um, hats today. All right, you walk into a hat shop. First thing you're going to think about is your size. If you don't know your size, um, can you size me up? Can somebody size me up? Bam, it doesn't matter. You know, it's the first thing that you do at the beginning of every sale. So you get sized up, let's say you're on a, uh, a seven and a quarter, seven and three eighths, when I want a little oversized look like this, and you know, like seven and a half if I want a really oversized look, you know, like that. Okay, seven and a quarter is usually a little tight for me. I'll usually go for like the seven and three eighths or more because I like them to be baggy. Um, my hair sometimes is short, sometimes it's big, so I keep it 
ready for the big haircuts and I could always just pad the hat down when I get my short haircuts to make it tighter. So if you're in doubt, what I'm saying is basically when you're in doubt, go big. If you are actually going between a seven and a quarter, seven, three, eight, seven and a half, depending on your hair, depending on whether you have a ponytail this year or a spiky punk rock haircut, you know, that can have a big effect on your size. So you gotta get measured for the way you're gonna wear the hat. Let's say I'm gonna wear my hats with my hair back like this all the time, you gotta measure it like that. Um, if you're wearing your ponytail below the hat, then you gotta have the ponytail below when you measure it. If your hair is down and not in a ponytail, it'll measure differently. So, okay, get it measured, measure yourself. You basically, you want the hat not to be so big that it's leaning on your ears and pushing your ears over. If it's obstructing your ears, usually the hat is too big. Now, if it's close to your ear, like, you know, a pinky's width, a half a pinky, uh, a millimeter, really, really close to the ear, touching your ear, just grazing it, but not really obstructing it, that's okay. That's where you want to be. You want to be very, very close to the ear, but not obstructing it and folding it over and stuff. Because then you think, oh, what do I do with my ear? Does it go out? Does it go in? I'm not sure what to do. Um, there is a trick, which I do a lot, I stick my left ear in, and I put my right ear out, and I do a slant. I do an extreme slant, one ear in, one out. Now that's a way to get around the oversized hat obstructing your ears problem. Extreme slant, one ear in, one ear out. Um, this hat is really too big for me, way, way too big, and that's how I get around that problem, it's with the slant. It's like a, a trick. Now, judging your size, you look on the side, it should generally be close to the ear, grazing it, not really far from the ear. You don't want it like, I don't know, you know, like three fingers away from the ear, that's too far. Two fingers could also be too far. I'm going to say some people like their hats tight, then two fingers is okay. Generally, it should be something like, you know, one finger away from, from touching the ear or closer. That's how you know size. Now, once you're in that area, if the hat size, let's say seven and a quarter, is too small, but seven and three eighths is obstructing your ear a little bit, that means you're between those two sizes. Most people are between sizes to some extent, so don't be surprised and say, oh, that's me, typical, I'm between sizes. Everybody is, you know, everybody is, because if you want to really get a hat to fit, you fine tune it, and you know, you might be a little bit of the ways between a quarter and a three-eighths. What you do is you pick up the hat, sweatband, and you put some foam inside the back, underneath this back part. You can either put the foam here or here. doesn't matter. It's folding down to the same place. I prefer not to put it on the leather because if you ever want to take it out, it takes pieces of the leather with it. But it doesn't matter so much, I guess. So tighten up your hat, get it right the way you want so it's not bumping into you. Right, you got your size, seven and three eighths, just nine. Now, next thing you want to think about is brim size. Brim size is the most important thing. You want to think, do I want a western hat? Do I want a dress hat? Do I want something in between? That's a good thing also. Uh, westerns tend to be a totally different type of felt, a totally different whole division. You know, you have Stetson western hats, Stets and dress hats are completely different, you know, felt styles, divisions, everything about them is different. Different boxes, different linings, different materials, different sweatbands. It's almost like two completely different entities in a way. So if you're looking for a Stetson Western, looking for like a some kind of dress hat, I think you should tell people if you're looking for a crossover hat, which is between, you know, like an open road or something that's got like a Western crown and a fedora brim or a fedora western roll and uh, you know something that's half cowboy and half western uh, half dress hat if you're looking for that tell him that's called a crossover hat um stetson has something called the roadster which is basically a fedora like this but instead of a ribbon band it has a piece of leather like a like a western hat um it's a leather trimmed western they also have things like the dune which is part of the gun club series the Dune has a leather, 
the Sturgis, the Santa Fe. Santa Fe are soft and crushable ones, westerns. They're outbacks, actually. They're not really westerns or dress hats or crossovers. They're outbacks. I guess an outback is a crossover. Outback hat is a sort of a flat brim western. has a uh, teardrop sort of fedora crown, usually, and a flat brim. Instead of curling up like a cowboy hat usually rolls up on the sides, a foot, uh, sorry, an outback goes down. So it's a downturn brown. It's basically like a flat western that is not too cowboyish. It's kind of like a little bit cowboy. A lot of people wear them with like overcoats and stuff. Uh, outbacks are kind of like a very mellow, laid back look. It's not like a huge western, like, where's your horse, partner? Sort of like the cowboy hat you could wear to work, and it looks kind of like just a plain black hat. It doesn't look like a big western hat. Outbacks are popular. Um, they're strong, usually. They're very hardy. They're not like fine and thin and soft like some dress hats can be. So they're good, rugged sort of New York City hats. I uh, definitely suggest Outback stuff. You know, it's, it's a good, strong way to go. And um, they tend to be really easy in the brim, too. They're downturn brims like this. Uh, you know, they're easy to deal with. Um, sets and outbacks are great. You know, uh, Cubras. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. We have ones from Italy that are fantastic. We have light felt crushable ones you could put in your pocket. They're made in New York, and they're only like $110. Uh, that come in three different brim sizes. Also outback shapes, and just like... I don't know, 10 colors or something. So the crushable hats are not, sorry, uh, crushable hats are not always expensive, um, but uh, they're hardy. They're, they're usually pretty hardy, the crushable light belts and stuff. So I recommend those, especially for a starter hat, a beginner hat. All right, let's get back to choosing your hat. So you're in the hat shop, you got your size. Next thing is brim size. Brim size is going to give you your whole look. Um, like they say, hair is everything. You've heard that expression. Brim size is everything. It's going to, like this hat in black. If I had this hat with a huge brim out to here, exact same hat, it would look just like a rabbi's hat, like a orthodox so Hasidic Jewish hat. Um, exactly. Now, the same exact hat with a teeny tiny one-inch brim, you'll say, hey, you look like Rocky Balboa, or like, um, everybody says Rocky. Some people say uh, the Bronx Tale. Hey, gee, remember the Bronx Tale? That kind of, you know, Brooklyn. So, now, if you take this hat and you give it a medium brim, let's say, like two inch, and you wear it this way, it might look like Frank Sinatra. The same two inch brim, and you flip it up, and it looks like the Blues Brothers. So, these brim sizes give you your whole image. It's very important to look at the image and look at yourself as one whole entity. Not just like, mm, how am I looking at you? Know, look at the whole thing, me standing here in this hat. You know, is this brim too big for me? Do I look like this? Do I look like that? What would you think objectively if you saw this guy in this brim? Now, a lot of times, if you do a hat in different colors, colors will be the next step after brim size. Um, Getting back to brim size, the biggest brim for a fedora is usually a 3-inch. Three 3-inch three brims are hard to find. They are not usually made by companies, you know, like regular companies like Dobbs and Stetson and um, Borsellino and, you know, companies that do, well, I shouldn't say Borsellino. They're a custom hat company. Companies that have a, a regular catalog of 30, 40, you know, styles like, like most companies, American hat companies, they don't always go to three inch brims for uh, dress hats. They usually stop at like two and a half, two and three quarters at the most. Now a three inch is considered a custom hat. It's something you have to order custom. As a hat shop owner, you have to go to certain companies that will basically make anything you want. Um, if I want a three inch brim, I have to go to let's say McGill Hats and say, okay, we want this felt this crown, this ribbon, in a three inch brim. Or maybe he'll have a, a sample of something in a two and a half and we'll say, can you make this in a three? And they'll say, mm, I think we have a three inch block. We could dig it out for you. And, you know, they're kind of rare and not a lot of people want. 
but three inch brims are now getting very trendy and you know, they're getting a little easier to find. You usually find really cheap, cheap garbage on the internet. Stuff that's like, you know, cool and pimped out and has a cool lining and made by this guy, that guy, but it's just horrible, horrible wool felt and the quality is just garbage. Or you find stuff that's custom and very expensive, you know, like Italian Borsellino and, you know, things that are beaver, you know, because they're custom. Um, we do a bunch of three-inch brim uh, fur felt fedoras. We do, oh, a lot, actually, I don't know, five or six maybe. Um, but, you know, if you have specification, like one of them is furry, like a, a beaver finish. It has a silk finish by McGill comes in three colors so if you don't like the furry and you know the thick wintry felt that one's out another one is super super thin flexible like a roll-up hat it's a crushable hat really feather light and minimal and soft that one's called the expedition the expedition has you know three inch brim but if you don't want crushable ribbon sweatband feather feather light thin felt um, whatever you're a mountain climber you want something heavy and tough you know, so cross that one off your list. It's not easy to find the three inch brim that's perfect for you. Uh, a lot of times when a company goes to three inches, they start getting a little Australian looking or outback looking or Western. You know, they give it this outdoorsy touch. But if you're looking for this kind of look in a three inch, like a fedora dress hat, um, there's not lots of them. Uh, we have one called the San Sebastian that comes with a, um, a little bit ribbon trim on the edge of the brim it's got what they call a bound edge so the brim bind the brim binding might turn some people off you might love that feature you might not like it um, so it's hard for you to find a three inch brim that you like out of all the five ones that we carry which is incredible there have been lots of years where we've had like maybe one or two three inch brims but of all of them you may not find anything that suits you there's also a price range um, let's say you're buying a three inch brim. Most of these dress hats are going to be imported. They're going to be custom and the price is going to be upwards of $200. Um, something from Spain, from Italy, custom made with a three inch brim and decent, you know, real felt is probably going to be more than $200. It's going to be, you know, 300 or plus. That's custom hats. Now you can also go fully custom where you have our hat maker make a hat to your specs completely. Um, every single aspect of it, how thick it is, you know, is it shiny, is it furry, is it velvety felt, is it uh, heavy, does it have this kind of sweatband, what color is this sweatband, what color binding is it, you know, you could have a bow on the side, a bow in the back, a bow on the other side, high crown, low crown, pork pot, whatever, you could have jewels on it, you can make it light up if you want, glow in the dark paint. Um, We've done any kind of hat you can imagine, ones with like bones on it and like a, a bird on it, so many wild, we did uh, ones that had rabbit ears on it, um, they sold a lot actually, like the Playboy bunny hat, just anything that you could dream up we will make for you, you know, a brim that big, or a brim, you know, as big as, you know, I don't know, a matchstick. We can make you a hat with no brim. Um, going custom is going to cost more. I'm going to say more like $450. A lot of times, better thing to do is you find a hat that's close to what you want and customize it. Uh, I call that semi-custom. Let's say you want a purple hat with green binding and a green band with a flat top. You might find a hat in my shop that is the right brim and it's purple felt. So we can reshape the top to pork pie, put green binding on it for you and a green ribbon. That's like $30, $60, uh, where an entire, you know, plus the price of the hat, which could be 200, let's say, okay. Um, 260 versus maybe 450, 500 for going completely custom. So it's like half the price. So a lot of times you could do something like just take a fedora with a really wide brim, put a tie-dyed band on it, like a really cool swirly, fiery band, and then matching binding on the edge, and then have us do some kind of like really groovy crease that looks like, I don't know, something that looks a little bit freaky on top that everybody says, wow, that hat is shaped like so amazing. 
You know, we do something cool to your hat with the binding, with the, and all of a sudden you're wearing a hat that's a completely original. It looks like you know, piece of art. Um, it's not hard to do a little crown shaping, change a band, and put brim binding on and stuff. It uh, takes a little time, you know, like a week or two at most, and that will give you dynamite results. Now, color is very, very important. We talked about brim size. Brim size will give you different images. Um, let's face it, you know, a really big brim is going to look very dramatic. You know, it's um, uh, a tiny brim is going to look a different way. You know, a two-inch brim can look like Sinatra. Um, maybe a two and a half inch brim with Bogart and so and so. A three inch will look like Cap Calloway. Um, all the brim sizes will give you different vibes. One might look dressy, one will look funky, uh, one will look more polished, one will look more serious. Um, colors do this for you, I think, even more. They change the mood of the hat uh, greatly. Uh, like this same hat, the one that we said could be a, a rabbi's hat or a blues brother's hat. If we take this hat and we put it in gray uh, and slant it, it'll look exactly like Frank Sinatra's hat. Uh, if we take this hat, turn down the back, and do it in brown, it's Indiana Jones. It looks exactly like Indiana Jones, like exactly. Um, just because it's a different color. That's Indiana Jones's hat. We flipped it back. Um... So color has a lot to do with the way your hat is going to be perceived, the way it looks. A black hat is tough. I, I say don't do wide brim blacks unless you know, you're doing westerns. Um, dress hats are tough in, in black, wide brim. You know, if you um, run a funeral home or if you're a preacher or a minister, something like that, then black is really appropriate for you. Otherwise, I would say do black in a shorter brim, a two-inch brim or go with gray. Gray is a much more versatile color. Gray will go with everything. Uh, colors like taupe and beige can be, you know, light brown beige colors. Also really, really versatile. This color here, gray, this sort of olive taupe, earthy color, amazing colors. These are great starter colors. And this color here, kind of a beige, Kind of a gray and an olivey green. These are colors that will match anything. If I have a blue suit or blue coat, let's say, this gray will be perfect. You do not want to be the guy all in blue, blue here and blue there. You know, first of all, it's only going to match that blue. It's not going to match anything else. The blue will match with blue. Yeah. What else? Uh, nothing. So, okay, don't get blue. I mean, the hat is really beautiful, get it, you know, if you love it, get whatever you like, but if you're looking for a good, versatile hat, pick the gray. We are now making our blue hats, a lot of them, with brown bands, because they're so much more versatile, and they look really cool and modern, and just, like, high fashion. So instead of black, uh, blue on blue, we're doing them now with brown bands, and sometimes with black bands, and it makes them look just better, more versatile, and you could wear them with other, more colors. Gray will go with blue. It will go with black. Um, you can be the guy all in black. I prefer to be the guy in black with the gray hat. I think it's more appropriate. Um, gray will go with blue, with black. It'll go with brown, like a trench coat. You remember Humphrey Bogart always had the trench coat with the gray fedora. It goes perfectly with the light brown trench coat. I'm going to say it goes with everything, with charcoal. Perfect. Um, the olive Taupe color, we call this taupe. It's kind of a, the light's not good today, it's really cloudy. But it's like a gray that doesn't lean towards um, a bluish gray. It's more of an olive gray, like a sage green with a brown band. Now the sage green with the brown band we call taupe. This matches everything. It's the most amazing color to match with uh, black, really. The guy all in black with black, it's just too serious and like ominous looking. Here comes this figure in a black coat with a black hat. It's just too intense. This is beautiful with black. Um, kind of a sage with a brown band or a taupe with black, it's awesome. Gray with black, awesome. These are all great, great colors. 
Um, yes, you can do black with black. That's also fantastic. It's no problem. You could do it. But, uh, you know, black is the kind of color you have to know that you love it. It can look very cool and fashionable and very bold and, you know, plain black. It's amazing. It also looks great, you know. It looks kind of tough, too. But, um, I feel like grays does the same job. Sometimes it's better. But black is it's a big, big seller. Um, color, you got to look at yourself with the color. Now, I don't usually wear black hats. I, I just, I don't love them. I tend to, you know, my eyes are bluish, greenish, grayish color. So I wear light colors usually because they flatter me. They look better on my face. Uh, let me just put this hat down. Okay. Yeah. So when I, um, I have like gray on and stuff, you know, you can see my eye color. It looks better and I get more compliments. So that's just a good color for me. Um, I know gray is always going to be a decent color for me. Now, as far as you, if you're a dark-haired person, a brunette or dark-haired guy, colors like black, dark brown, uh, Stetson's mink color, they'll look great on you, like fantastic. Um, it's hard for me to tell you what's going to look good on you. What I think you need to do is you go to a place, you find yourself get your size, find a shape that you like. Let's say you like the, the two and a half inch brim hat with the low crown, okay? Find a shape, then try the shape that you like in all the colors. Try it in a dark color and a light color, like gray is light, um, navy, black, and charcoal and brown are dark. Try, you know, a bunch of different things and see how it looks. And imagine you're gonna be bonding with this hat for a long, long time. Maybe the blue with the brown band looks really cool, but you've got one really good, nice, expensive hat you spent money on. You know it's going to last you for like 20 years or more. It's going to be laying around all the time. It's going to be your favorite hat. It's going to break in and just be part of you, like your trademark. Do you really want that hat to be blue with brown? You know, you have one. It's okay if you have, you know, one, two, three, four hats. You know, it's cool, but... Maybe for, you know, your go-to hat, your classic, most loved hat, that, you know, cherished hat, you got to think to make that color count. Maybe whatever, gray. It could be something else. If you're a person like me, maybe you want something more exciting. Like, you know, I love green hats and royal blue hats and orange hats and yellow and weird colors like that. Partly because, you know, I've worked a quarter of a century in a hat shop and I see the same colors over and over. And when I see something different, it's just cool, you know, it's different and novel, you know. And I go, neato, wow, I'd like to have that. So try different things, you know. Um, get out of your comfort zone. Try an off-white colored hat, you know, and, and see how they look. By, I always say this, by seeing what looks bad, by seeing the wrong stuff, you're going to know what's right. Like for me, I don't like myself in short brims, which is basically why all my short brims are here at home. And you see, I store them on their brims, and they're all wrinkled up and stuff. But I use them for bumming around and stuff. Um, and they're old, and I just really don't take care of them much anymore. My bigger brim hats, I take good care of, and I leave them at work in boxes and stuff, because they're higher up on, you know, they're not on the back burner. But... I know, looking at brim size, is what I love and what I don't love. Um, it will take you a little while, but you'll get it. It can take one session at a hat shop in front of the mirror. Basically, you have to try two, two and a half inch, three inch. You try them all, and you'll know what brim is right for you. Um, sometimes you could do a bigger brim if the crown is low. So if you got a really big three inch brim that looks flamboyant, okay. As long as you lower the crown, not everything is big. It'll even it out. You never know. So go to a place with the selection just to try stuff on at least. So you can get an idea of your brim size, your color of choice, and where to start. Um, after that, you could also think about quality. Quality is something that, you know, you have a price range, obviously. Do you need to spend more? Um... Better felts are not always better in the rain, okay? They're a 
lot of times softer, more pliable, more flexible. They fit better, they're lighter, they feel amazing. But sometimes thicker hats are better in the rain. Um, shorter brimmed hats with edge treatments are usually better in the rain. Hats with long brims that are thin and have raw edges, those things can be hats that can get a little wobbly in the rain. So stepping up to a more expensive hat, it's going to be worth it a lot of the time. I'm going to say, you know, fur felt versus wool felt is usually better most of the time, but not always. Most of the time, fur felt hats are constructed better and you don't have to worry too much about them shrinking because uh, wool shrinks and good fur felt doesn't really shrink. Uh, shrinks like a millimeter, you know, every 10 years or something, but, you know, nothing that's noticeable. So, yes, it's worth it to step up to a better hat. Um, you know, of course I'm going to tell you that I'm selling hats, but it's not always worth it. Take the two hats. If one of them is double the price, you know, and you like the one that's 100 but the $200 one is, you know, it's out of your price, just get the one for $100. Um, because even if you're going to buy a bunch of $300 hats later, you're going to want that $100 hat in your wardrobe because... I don't want to wear my really expensive, brand new, pink velour custom hat outside when people are, you know, splashing mud on me and there's like salt on the ground and, you know, like my down jacket has like all these salt stains with people driving and splashing. You don't want to wear that, you know. So there are times where you want to wear a little bit less expensive hat just because, you know, it's nasty out. You, you know, you don't want to ruin a perfect hat, you know. For, Whatever, you know, I'm just saying. Maybe you do. Um, you know, like this. I have hats that I like to weather a little bit. You know, like my Tom Waits hat or whatever. You know, I like this one to get a little messed up. So, I shouldn't assume. But sometimes it's good to have a little less expensive hat. Stuff like light felt hats, they're really cool. Um, when it's so nasty out, you just don't want to throw on one of your bright colored expensive customs, you know. You put on your, your beater, you know. I've got them. It's my beater hat, and um, all right, there's not much I want to say about choosing hats right now. Uh, I think I've covered a lot of it. You need to think about quality, yes, but the most important thing is that you're comfortable in the hat. Comfort, comfort is everything. Not comfort like the way it feels. Comfortable like being comfortable in your own skin, that kind of comfort. You have to be at ease with it, so... It's not going to lay in your closet, and it'll get worn a lot. So if something is a little bit daring and risky, but it's so amazing, you just got to get it, it might lay there in your closet, like, you know, the pair of silver knee-high boots like Kiss wore. Oh, it's amazing. I got to get that. When are you going to wear it? You're not going to wear it to work. You know, you're not going to walk around with it on your day off. You might wear it to some club once or something. I don't know. When, you know. So buy something that's practical that you're going to wear. And if it's something that somebody's trying to push you into it and you feel like, I might not wear this. Am I going to take this out? Don't get it. You know, get a cap or something. Get a Eskimo, you know, fur hat or something. Something that's useful, functional. Um, you have to be realistic about your hat choice. Whatever you get, make sure that you're going to wear that thing. Um, because these hats are expensive and they're meant to last. They're, you know, we don't sell made in China hats, you know, cheap stuff because they don't last. And, um, a lot of my hats, like this one, I got in uh, maybe 96 or something, 97. And I have a couple of the other ones I showed you. They're all from between like 95, 96, 97, 98. I've had these hats well over like 20 years, some of them. And they're still going really strong. Basically, all this needs is a little steam up. Um, and I could pretty much make it look brand new. There's no stains, there's no rips, there's no sweat stains. Everything is perfect. All I have to do is round out the top with the steamer, reshape it, put a little stiffener in there, give it a little bit more snap. And that's it. Uh, I could even change the, the sweatband or the lining if that got a little funky, but it didn't. Um, so this is a really good hat that I've rolled and put in my pocket, you know, countless times for people. I used to do this while I was selling them, you know, like maybe five times a day. 
and it's such good quality that I'm probably going to get another 20 years out of it. Um, but I'm going to say this, um, you do not have to spend a fortune. Fur felt is good. Um, one little test I have is make sure your hat snaps. If the salesman says, oh yeah, it's not snapping, it's, it's really soft, uh, well, uh, no, this and that, uh, I'll go fix it. You know? so like, look, this is a brand new hat, don't you think it should snap? Just look them in the eye, you know, this is a brand new hat, nobody's worn it. Do you think this hat should snap? And he'll look at you and he'll say, yes, it should snap, I'll get you another one. If the other one is not doing it, it might not be a good model, you know. That's a really good test. Just see if your hat snaps in front, see if it snaps in back. There are some hats that are really not that snappable, like um, really high quality soft Panama hats, like the good, good ones, like Monte Cristi's and stuff. Some of them get so soft that they're just like, almost like cloth, like a, you know, like a pillowcase. They have no stiffness, nothing to snap. So some, if something is really soft, and especially a short brim, like a one and a half inch brim, that won't snap. There's no way. Um, softness equals little snap. Stiffener, when they, it's got a little stiffener, starchy, it will snap better. Um, that's a good test. So when you're choosing a hat, check it out. Make sure it snaps. It should not um, be floppy from the get-go, uh, that's something that you should do to a hat, you know. So if it's brand new and it's not snapping, the hat is either made wrong, it was made poorly, blocked poorly, or it's inferior felt, it's just too thin felt, or it's just a bad design, the hat was designed badly, you know, the, the block was just not curvy enough to have a good flange to snap. So um, that is the ultimate test. It's a simple test. And I would say if your hat doesn't snap, get another one. Um, and if your old hat used to snap and doesn't snap anymore, it can easily be fixed. You can bring it into us at JJ Hat Center. I will do it for free. Anytime I'm at work, which is usually every weekend, I'm there Mondays, Tuesdays, there's uh, actually Monday, Tuesdays, Friday, Saturday, Sunday now. And I'm off Wednesday and Thursdays, but that does change. So anytime you want to come and bring me your hat, I will reshape it. Um, I will steam it. I'll get the snap back. I'll uh, get it symmetrical. Um, sometimes I could clean it. We don't really do hat cleaning, but you know, some felt we could kind of buff out, you know, like a thin layer of felt and clean it out, some stains. Um, so I can clean it somewhat, but I could definitely reshape your hat, and I, I will do it for free. Um, just ask, you know, it doesn't take much, just like a, a smile or something. You could bring me some chocolate too if you want. Um, no nuts though. So, yeah, bring me some chocolate and I'll do like a little better job for you. That's absolutely for sure. So, alright guys. So, choose wisely. These hats should be with you as a companion for a good, good portion of your life. So make your choice count, and if you order something on the internet um, and you don't like it, um, I'm talking about from other companies, a lot of people show me internet hats that they get and they're very unhappy and they want me to help fix them, cut the brims, change it. You know. If you have something like that you've bought and you're disappointed with it, remember this, anything you buy in the mail is returnable. You can get a refund uh, no matter what the store policy is. That's the law. If you bought it mail order, you can return it for a refund. Some people have like these restocking fees and these little loopholes, but no matter what we say in our shop, if we say no refunds, if you buy it mail order, that's the law. Um, it's United States law. So you can get a refund despite the store policy. So if you buy a crapola hat from some flashy website and you're not into it, send it back fast. Don't try to steam it and fix it using my techniques. Just get rid of it. Um, your hard-earned cash deserves a good hat. And there are hats that are made in USA, like our Light Felt Blues, our uh, Light Felt Atlantic, um, Light Felt Stingy Blues. Those hats are $110 rollable, rainproof, 
super reliable, super tough. You could stomp on and whip your friend with it. Whatever, I don't know. Eat soup in it and then clean it out. No, not the soup part, but whatever. They're so sturdy that I don't see any reason to buy anything else in that $100 range. Um, but whatever. Um, if you have problems with your hats, ask me. I will be happy, happy to ask, answer any questions to, um, that are hat related technical questions and uh, that's it thanks for tuning in if you haven't hit the uh, subscribe button that little red bar underneath there it does help to support this channel and you know it doesn't cost anything but it'll just let you know the, when my videos are coming up uh, you know it'll come up in your YouTube feed so if you don't mind hitting subscribe it sort of helps uh, like support the channel and keep it going so if you like what you see you know Press the thumbs up like thing and the subscribe thing. It's actually like, you know, a good thing. All right. Thanks very much. And maybe I'll play you guys out a little bit. Let's see what we got here. I'll put on one of my cool effects. My new pedal board. Yeah, you know what? Stick the effect off. All right. Let's do it straight. Thank mm -hmm. you.